So last night, me and Gundam were streaming. Yeah, I know. Fratanga collabed with Gundam before Griffin. Well, that's because Griffin avoids me, because Griffin doesn't like me. Well, I don't know if any of that's true. I'm just assuming it. Anyways, the stream is unlisted, but if you want to watch it, I'll post a link down below. We were given the privilege of being notified immediately, live as we were streaming, that JTEC apparently fell asleep live on one of his streams. Oh, Sleepy Joe. And we recorded it. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you because mwah, just when I thought JTEC couldn't stop having any more DSP moments. Fuck this bag. We want to watch JTEC sleep. Then, Holy and then shit. I just to side Here, I'm going to send to you on the Discord. What I'm playing next. This fight is so bad, we're literally opting to watch <laughs> JTEC. <laughs> We'd rather watch JTEC <laughs> snoring. <laughs> Here, let me put up the fucking. Ryan Reynolds, get the fuck out of here with this Mint Mobile. He's he's out. Oh my God! Can you guys hear that? No, I'm gonna I'm I'm play. I'm gonna watch what you call it. You got it. With your old podcast, so bored you went to sleep. God damn! <laughs> JTEC falls asleep on his. Own. I'm recording this. Hold on. This is some DSP shit right here, boy. JTEC, you fell asleep on your own stream, boy. This guy has got some hits, I'm telling you. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. How can way. you be such a fucking legend? <laughs> this is, is this like a, is, is this is, is this his DSP moment? <sighs> Did you hear the other dude in the stream? Like, yeah, yeah. Jay, wake up. <laughs> Art, isn't it? And he's still sleeping, by the way. I know this because he's hanging right below my chest. Say hi, Jay. Oh yeah, that's right, he's asleep. Yeah, you're probably wondering why I'm not in my usual paper mache room. And that's due to this lovely artist by the name of Rising Blur. If you want any kind of art commissioned, I would personally recommend them. Anyways, on to the video. Look, Jim Ryan, Sony, PlayStation, I don't know who to blame. Can you guys just uh, throw the PlayStation fanboys a bone already? Because I have to wake up every day, log onto Twitter, and see bullshit like uh, this. It's called the share button because it shares when you hit the button. Don't care. PS5 is so much better. Come on, Sony. Is it really that dry over there at PlayStation that PlayStation fanboys are more entertained by going over to Xbox posts? No, seriously, is it that dry over there that PlayStation fanboys are spending more of their time on Twitter? Because that's what I've been seeing. Fuck, I'm here with almost 100 hours in Death Stranding. Meanwhile, you got fucking PlayStation fanboys with nearly 1,000 hours on Twitter posting what they think are memes, uh, like this one. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. My God, if this passes as humor for them, then they would probably love going to an all women stand up comedy show. Like, check this one out. What's this supposed to mean? An Xbox fanboy is pretending to be an Xbox fanboy? I, I don't get it. Much like feminist comedy, it requires you to be a part of that cult to find it funny in the first place, because otherwise you wouldn't understand it. See, the thing about PlayStation fanboys is they're quite hard to understand. That's why every time somebody brings a post of a PlayStation fanboy saying something stupid to me, I usually end up being like that Pawn Stars guy. I'll be right back. Um, I got a buddy who'll know everything. Okay. I've always got a buddy who can always look into it for me. That way, once it's interpreted, I can officially make fun of it. It's a long process. That's why videos can't be pumped out so easily. So anyways, according to anybody who doesn't play anything besides third person action adventure games with stealth elements or big blockbuster AAA games that they'll play for 20 hours and never pick up again, apparently there's nothing to play. I've been hearing this the most from PlayStation guys who they themselves have said PlayStation is dry. I don't know what to tell anybody. Look, you could stop production on video games for the next 10 fucking years, and I would still have too many games to play from my current library. See, what people actually mean when they say there's nothing to play is that there's nothing to brag about and for them to use in their console fanboy wars. See, what they want is those Metacritic scores and those game sales, because those matter more to them than the game they're actually going to play. They don't know other games like uh, Path of Exiles exists, or Final Fantasy XIV Online, or Valheim, or the fucking Yakuza games. I don't know, I'm projecting what I play here, I guess. So since there's nothing for them to play, 
since there's no new big hardware updates, they don't have any ammunition to continue their fanboy wars. And since Sony hasn't fed them anything about hardware recently, and we haven't seen the power of the SSD do what Sony promised yet, they've decided to turn to blaming PC gamers and the PC platform. I, I know, I know what you're thinking. What? How does that make any fucking sense? Well, according to PlayStation fanboys, Sony deciding to put some of their resources into porting games to the PC is the reason their games are being held back or some bullshit. Because apparently the PC is holding back the PlayStation 5. <laughs> the PC is holding back the PlayStation 5. That's what they're saying. So Sony has this exclusive called Abandoned that's coming out. It's a survival horror game, cinematic first person horror survival shooter, open world, focused on realistic survival gameplay. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this game is massively overshadowed by Resident Evil Village. It's totally not due to a thick ass vampire lady's ass. Fuck, let's put on some gameplay of this shit. Let's see what the PC can't run, I guess. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Well, already there's like 2.6 thousand dislikes on the video, so I don't know what PlayStation fanboys are bragging about. All of us. Imagine. Waking up at a place far, far away from home. Away from your lost ones. Away from friends. Away from safety. Trying to understand how you got there. No one there to guide you. No one there to assist you. No food. No water. You've got nothing to survive. This is a game that's not held back, apparently. What we are seeing here is what PS5 games will look like when they're not held back by the PC. And what do they look like? Like any other run-of-the-mill asset-flipped game you can find on Steam. I mean, for fuck's sake, look how soft those goddamn shadows are. It's like, they try having the most realistic woods in the world, and yet they have a fucking gif of smoke for the campfire. Okay, whatever, I've seen enough. I mean, my PC is already sweating just looking at that goddamn trailer. That or the liquid cooling is finally fucked up. A true next-gen PS5 only game. Not held back by PC either. I expect this to be great next-gen experience. 90% of the time, I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Not held back by PC. Now tell me this, what the fuck does that even mean? Consoles have always been the things holding games back because of hardware limitations, never the other way around, so being held back by PC makes absolutely zero sense. No, it makes sense. There's no PC GPU that has fixed function hardware. <laughs> <laughs> to decompress data like the PS5 does, there's also less than 1% PC gamers that have a PCIe 4 M.2 SSD. When you talk PC, you talk about the specs that are common, so the dev would code for them, not so $2,000 PC. Oh my god, I was having such a good fucking day. And then I decided to cover this shit. So, uh, you know, I guess there's no fixed function to decompress data like the PS5 does. I mean, that that's his whole point. You know, I thought it was a meme, but then he tried... Fucking neighbors and their stupid ass motorcycles, I swear to God. Well, for starters, the fastest SSDs, specifically M.2 NVMe SSDs, and if you want to get even more specific, PCIe 4, yeah, the fastest ones you can find are actually on the PC, with speeds that exceed that of the PlayStations. But on top of that, you'll also have the support of both NVIDIA and Microsoft. With NVIDIA RTX IO, you will get those decompression techniques brought to the PC. And yes, they will load directly from the SSD to the GPU. And the worst part is that this feature will also be supported in Gen 3 NVMe SSDs, so it ain't gonna be exclusive to Gen 4 SSDs. I think we'll be fine here on the PC. I don't think we're really held back by anything. I mean, you can go ahead and keep blaming the PC and the Xbox for holding back the PlayStation's miraculous SSD or some bullshit, but at the end of the day, both the Xbox and the PlayStation 5 are gonna be running Resident Evil Village at 45 FPS. Is that the PC's fault? Or is that Sony yet again putting hardware in their console that won't be touched by other publishers except themselves? I mean, he can go ahead and talk about how only 1% of PC gamers have specifically this set of hardware that can match the PS5 or some bullshit, yet the majority of people out there don't even have a PS5, so I don't know what he's bragging about. And if he's talking about 1% of PC gamers, well, there's a billion of them out there. So we're talking about what, 10 million PC gamers? That's a pretty good start. It's 
just baffling to me because a few months ago, Colt Eastwood was running around saying that the Xbox Series ports of games weren't running as good as they should because they were being held back by the PlayStation 5. It's that type of bullshit. You always have to look for someone to blame, but you can never come to the conclusion that maybe... I don't know, maybe the PlayStation 5 isn't this ultra-powerful gaming machine that leaves everything else in the dust? It does have unique hardware in it, and Sony is innovating with the SSD. The fact that they're actually trying to put any resources into making SSDs and ray tracing mainstream is a good thing, but that's technology that you're going to see them utilize more in their own exclusive content. And as we know with exclusive content, when you focus on a single console and produce a game for it, the results are remarkable. Sony puts out some good looking ass games, but to try and sit there and say that none of that could run on a PC is ridiculous because he does end up saying that. Do we have one multi-plat PS5 PC game with game mechanics like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart's world swapping? No, because the current modern PC storage architectures can't execute that. Well, first off, I'm gonna need proof that they can't do it because the Unreal Engine 5 tech demo that we were told was utilizing the PS5 SSD apparently runs perfectly fine on current gen cards and current gen SSDs. You know, console fanboys want to constantly brag how consoles have optimization to get them through the little things that a PC can do better. Yet they seem to act like PCs don't have optimization themselves. I mean, for fuck's sake, the game was built on a PC. Of course it can run on a PC, you dumb fuck. Anyways, I just had to tell him about RTX IO and direct storage that will be coming, you know, so PC gamers don't have to sweat so much about getting a PCIe 4 NVMe. Is either one released yet? Has the DLSS equivalent been released for PS5? Checkerboard resolution works on the same principle, and it's been around since five years. Checker... Checker... Board resolution? That's not the same thing as DLSS. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You just eat up whatever Mark Cerny tells you, don't you? Dear God. This is the shit I have to deal with. I have to deal with making tweets and then console fanboys coming and trying to lecture me on tech and hardware, telling me that I won't be able to run these games in the future, that my PC is already obsolete. The PS5 has dominated the high-end sphere, yet every single game that has come out, I have been able to run on my PC. I just don't see the need of having to be overly dramatic about the power of the PlayStation 5. How exactly is PC gaming in any way holding back the PS5? I literally just bought a fast SSD for my laptop, my GPU clocks faster, my CPU clocks faster, my RAM clocks faster, I have DLSS 2.0, explain the magical quote-unquote limits. Now imagine if they spent thousands of hours optimizing the game for PC, only for the handful of people that have a PC like you. That sounds economical. When we talk PC, we talk about the most basic and common PC, not a $2,000 plus rig. Woo, okay. Yep, uh, that's the one that's gonna end the video because I cannot even fathom how he came to that sort of conclusion. Our boy here is holding a box of an SSD that's clearly faster than the one in the PS5, and we're supposed to believe, nope, PC is holding back the PS5. Until the PlayStation 4, until the Xbox One, and until the fucking 900 series and 1000 series cards die, you are not going to see hardware on this level utilized in any meaningful way other than performance increase and loading times. And even then, the PS5 isn't that impressive in either of those things. Still relying on lower assets, still relying on checkerboard rendering. I mean, I appreciate the aim for 60 FPS as the bare minimum. The consoles are doing a great job of that. But there's just something so goddamn cringe about simping so hard for a console, you have to lie to yourself. The worst part is, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the PlayStation 5 utilize that SSD for some incredible shit. But the fact that all of these games are made on a PC already gives away the fact that the PC is not the problem. It's goddamn embarrassing. Use some common sense here, will ya? You're simping for a game that doesn't even look that much better than last gen games. And also, I don't know what PlayStation fanboys are doing in the first place. Talking about performance, talking about resolution, talking 
talking about ray tracing, talking about hardware in general. These are the same guys who last gen told us they don't give a shit about 60 FPS. They don't give a shit about 120 FPS. They don't give a shit about ray tracing. Yet they're the only ones on Twitter all day long. And when I say all day long, I'm not joking, all day long trying to one-up Xbox fanboys, and Xbox fanboys are trying to one-up them over a 3 FPS difference. I don't even know how PlayStation fanboy Twitter accounts ever reach past a thousand followers, but they're quite popular. That's why you gotta follow Daddy Frit instead. Give him the power of the clout, and I promise you I will not abuse this power. Oh, also you can uh, add me on the Xbox app thingy majiggy. Here it is. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you so choose to. I don't give a fuck. I need to be away from this shit. And I'll see you guys next video. Every Congo sucks ass. PC can't touch the console. But I tell you what, when that motherfucking Wii U come out, they gonna be back here riding to destroy his motherfucking cat. Motherfucker, what, 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 what? Not a three PC of all time. Time. Not a nine console this gen. Gen. What the, what the, what the?